We are sensing everything on the planet. That's, I began to realize that everything that moves and changes on the planet is going to be measured and then served. At the time, the internet didn't really exist, but served as kind of data, now services into the web. And it'll be used to really look at virtually the world as an ecosystem. And our world is an ecosystem. I mean, isn't this a beautiful picture? This is, I mean, it's for me, every time I look at it, just sort of all kinds of stuff comes up. It's a, a living system that we inhabit, and it's complex, it's, it's evolving, it's interrelated. Um, and today, increasingly, we are seeing that our footprint in this environment is, is causing, I don't want to say disruption, but it's certainly major influences. Let me just also say that it's an incredible time for our field. Those of you who have been in this field for a long time uh, realize that this is, this is our time, so to speak. Uh, but those of you who are just getting into it, it's, a, it's an amazing technology and, uh, and, and, and science that is going to underpin the evolution of the planet. It's going to provide whole new approaches for seeing and understanding and evolving the planet. And my sense is GIS professionals, I call that as really geospatial professionals uh, of all types and organizations are increasingly leveraging the science of geography to, to look at the world in a, in a different way. There's digital twins of of the natural environment, landscapes. Uh, there's digital twins of buildings, of networks, utility networks, of, of whole cities. The whole smart city movement is in a way kind of a digital twin measuring everything that moves and changes in the city. And that, the vision of that platform is one of being able to create more efficient cities or more care about how we take care of landscapes, or I'll make the assertion that geography is the science of our world. It actually organizes everything, everything that we know. I like to use the word where, and I'll just bring it up with you. Where, where were you born? Um, where, where did you first drive a car? The dimension of where is wired into our brains. This is why maps, the language of geography, are so interesting to people because they reference seeing the world through this memory. This language is also where we're integrating in virtually everything that we know because it's the connection point between all of your very specialized fields, whether it's computing or measurement. The vision that I wanted to talk about is this notion of dynamically, you know, not only measuring and sensing, but also serving and integrating and applying that knowledge to virtually everything that humans do. So the notion is, can I take everything that we measure, maps and real-time measurements or remotely sensed information, integrate it into a kind of network of services, think like the internet, and use it to not only visualize what's going on, fire, whatever, but also analyze the relationships between patterns and use those things to support making decisions and planning. Geospatial infrastructure, this name that I call it, is a rich network of distributed content services that are emerging on the web that are geo-related. That means I can fuse them. I can not confuse them, but fuse them. I can bring together imagery and sensor networks. I can bring together models about what's going to happen with the winds tomorrow in LA. I can bring it all together and, and, and have a, a network of sources of truth that I can fuse and, uh, and interconnect and, and better understand things. 
And as Richard Saul Werman often says, understanding precedes action. Notion is empowering society to see the truth and then act more effectively. Well, this network is emerging rapidly. Uh, and it's a kind of what I like to refer to as a web GIS. It organizes content in portals, maps, images, data, tools, so that people can discover it and then collaborate around that content in terms of human action. That's why, again, I think it's very important. Okay, it's like the, in some ways, it's like the printing press or the, it's the invention or the innovation. That's why I think this time is so important. It's the innovation of a platform for disseminating uh, geographic knowledge, the science of our world, everything. <laughs> you know, for me, geography, what is geography? It's everything. And this notion of interconnecting services across the web is really about interconnecting everything and then serving it up in such a way that it supports enterprise approaches like a utility company or a city or a business, everything for everyone. And that's, that's the magic of maps. It's, it's happening it's in thousands of organizations all over the planet, in Saudi Arabia, at the UN, in little cities, in big utility companies. This notion of fusing and sharing services among and between different organizations and different individuals. It's a whole new platform and way of thinking. It's may, being done with, in both the public sector and also in the private sector. People are learning how in the government to share their data, not as open data. That never really worked very well. It's open services. My organization is in service to the other government agencies or in service to the public. Every day between four and 5,000 new data sets are shared. Isn't that a remarkable statistic? Every day. Uh, and more measurement is happening. And you can, some of you in the remote sensing world know very clearly this is about to explode. What I'm getting across is that now we have engineered as a community using standards and other techniques, ways to integrate in virtually every kind of measurement that we know dynamically as services. So sensors to services and whether it's CAD files or BIM models or uh, LIDAR data or imagery data or tabular data that is geo-referenced or textual information, it's all being organized around geography using web services. So it's the fusion of everything we know. And that includes, I just threw in a few of these to make it more real, about every kind of remotely sensed information. And it's going into just about every kind of application. These are a few that I just brought together for, for this, this day because this week we're suffering under fires and disasters. This integration is not just for the fun of it. It's being used at the other side to make important decisions in real time. So the idea of real-time sensing to real-time action. This happened in COVID, of course. I mean, 1.3 trillion maps were made on that COVID site at John Hopkins. They didn't have real-time measurement of every time somebody got sick, but they harvested the data off the web and served out you know, billions of maps every day, looking at measurement sensors into action. People, people changed their whole way of understanding COVID based on that sensor environment to action. Their understanding changed and their behavior changed. So the great hope is that as we bring this together, we have the COVID as an analogy map, a map as an analogy for shifting how, we, how we're dealing with the great problems of carbon or the great problems of loss of biodiversity. We gotta to get together. And you, particularly you in this group, are the people that are the players. And at the other end of it, apps, whether they're 
map apps. Uh, now there are literally millions of people that are carrying around devices like the Tremble device or the Leica device, capturing data as they move, serving it into this environment, and then other people are looking at it at the same time. This is geospatial infrastructure that's showing up on our screen, and it's not one, it's not led by one. It's the network effect, like the web itself. So it's not just a little pretty picture. Some of these services are deep analytics. The weather model, or now the new generation of flood models that are coming out of NOAA, they showed me the map of the flood forecasted from water upstream and, okay. This is very powerful, so it's not just pretty pictures or maps. It's going deeper with analytic modeling. And simple tools like this one, I'm, I'm excited about this because this is in a browser. Uh, I can actually take multiple feeds, multiple sensors in a browser, and I can model the relationships, model the patterns with other patterns and create new patterns. That notion of, of getting back to trying to model how things are connected on the, on the planet. And that's going, to go right into, that's going to go right into consumer technology. It's going to affect, it's going to affect the way people work. And uh, well, I just say organizations, the net effect is organizations are beginning to collaborate. I'm very proud of a few of these. One of them is up in the upper left-hand corner. That's PG&E, the big utility in California, and California's emergency response organizations, CAL FIRE, et cetera. They're sharing services back and forth. Uh, that's changing the way people understand in real time the fire. It's helping PG&E respond to the fire, and it's helping uh, outage analysis be shared with the public. It's cool. And, uh, I already mentioned the SDGs at the global level. Uh, regional planning in Southern California, this has 197 cities are all sharing services and doing a regional plan together. Together. You get the idea of working together collaboratively using this platform to both understand and also more effectively act. So the question is for all of you, is this possible globally? I think yes, like the internet, it's going to grow organically. People will figure out business models or how to invest in it. It'll not be centrally controlled. It'll be distributed and it'll organically come together. In my sense, it'll also be the sort of new uh, nervous system for managing collectively the planet. My field is actually GIS. It's my, it's my life, actually. And the integration of this web services with GIS means that we can link all these six notions together. We can measure anything and manage the data in a distributed environment. It can be dynamically brought together to make maps or visualizations. It could do analytics. It can, it can be used for design and planning, my field. Uh, it can help people make decisions all the way, uh, you know, the daily brief in the president's office is fed by this exact architecture from the Intel environment. And then action, ultimately, uh, what, where it all comes down. This notion of distributing sensors as services to drive action. Thank you very much.